Hey guys. Welcome to Couple. Please like and subscribe if you like the video. Brett Kavanaugh hasn't even been confirmed to the Supreme Court, and lower court judges have already declared war on Roe v. Wade. On Monday morning, the 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals issued an astonishing decision upholding a law that's virtually identical to an anti-abortion measure the Supreme Court struck down in Whole Woman's Health v. Hallerstedt. The three-judge panel, composed entirely of Republican appointees, including a Trump judge, essentially defied the Supreme Court in allowing Missouri to saddle abortion clinics with pointless regulations designed to guarantee their closure. It's a preview of how the courts will overturn Roe swiftly, ruthlessly, and dishonestly once Kavanaugh is confirmed. Monday's ruling in Comprehensive Health v. Hawley was authored by Judge Bobby Shepard, a George W. Bush appointee who has expressed hostility toward Roe before. In a 2015 ruling, Shepard begrudgingly struck down North Dakota's fetal heartbeat bill, which would have banned abortions after six weeks. In making that decision, though, he attacked the Supreme Court precedents he was forced to follow, urging Scottis to re-evaluate its jurisprudence and overturn Roe. Shepard's bizarre opinion went on to cite pseudoscience about the regrets of the women who abort and the, non-existent, connection between abortion and breast cancer while condemning nefarious abortion mills. Still, for all Shepard's anti-abortion rhetoric, he ultimately recognized that if he struck down the law he'd promptly get reversed by the Supreme Court. Three years later, this calculation has clearly changed. With Kavanaugh's confirmation likely to go through this month, Shepard no longer feels obliged to comply with Roe or its successor cases. In Planned Parenthood v. Casey and Whole Woman's Health, the Supreme Court held that any law that imposes an undue burden on a woman's access to abortion violates the U.S. Constitution. If a court determines that burdens of a certain restriction outweigh the benefits, it must strike down the law. The Missouri measure in question is nearly indistinguishable from the Texas law that Scottis invalidated in Whole Woman's Health. It imposes two requirements on abortion clinics, they must meet complex, pricey, and medically unnecessary architectural standards, and their doctors must be privileged to perform surgical procedures at a hospital that's no more than 15 minutes away than the clinic in question. This passage constitutes open defiance of the Supreme Court dressed up in the thin pretext of legalese.